What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, we had some great alpha dropped regarding vouchers in the live stream for the, uh, it wasn't a town hall, but the live stream for the Rebellion launch today. So in case you missed it, just want to cover a couple of quick things. First and foremost, the most important part is Matt literally uttered the words, make vouchers scarce again. So that is going to be the campaign slogan for 2024. It's Massa, okay? We are we are all about Massa. We want to get vouchers back up to 20 cents and above. And uh, I'm glad that the focus has now shifted to vouchers because traditionally it has not been a token that has uh, had any, any kind of like true value within the ecosystem in the way that we've all been hoping and, and kind of the way that the team's been promising. So I'm glad that we're making this shift now and Matt is taking a renewed focus on it. So here's the thing, battle wagons. Don't hold Matt to it, as he said, but they will be about 10 vouchers per battle wagon. So I did the rough math. And uh, again, this is just to give you some numbers here on how things will play out. When you look at it, let's say there's a thousand players that all decide that they want to get uh, a full or a complete uh, collection of the, uh, of the Rebellion cards. Now, here's the best part. They don't even need a full or a fully maxed deck. This could be a bronze. This could even be a novice deck. But the thing is, if you have the cards and you want to receive uh, airdrop, you know, uh, I guess they're airdrop points or airdrop, you know, conflict points, whatever they end up calling them, then you will need to stake your cards. So if you have a collection, again, it could be at any level, whether it's fully maxed in silver, gold, or even just single BCX cards, you will be able to stake them on the, uh, you would be able to take them on the battle wagons while still playing. So everybody's collection should be on a battle wagon. You don't really lose anything from that. So again, we're going to run some rough numbers here. At least I ran the rough numbers already. A thousand players, 10, uh, well, well, let's do, let's do, hear the assumptions. A thousand players, we'll just say 80 cards in the set to make it easy. I think there's going to be like 96, but that includes the airdrops and maybe the promo cards that are coming later. So just for easy, clean numbers, 80 cards. Um, and then uh, 10, 10 DEC, or sorry, 10 vouchers per uh, pack, right? Or sorry, not 10 per pack, per battle wagon is what I was trying to get at. When you run the math on that and think, okay, 1,000 players with 80, you know, uh, 80 cards, they're going to require, you do that, you do that math, divide it by five card slots per battle wagon. That gives you 100, uh, or that gives you 16, sorry, 16 that you'll need at 10 vouchers. That's 160 vouchers per player that has a complete collection. Again, it doesn't need to be max, but just a complete collection of rebellion cards that they're staking. Multiply that by 1,000, and now we're looking at 160,000 vouchers that would be spent and burned. That's actually going to be a lot higher than that because people also have packs that they're going to stake. You're also going to consider the fact that people will have extra battle wagons, not just for their deck, but maybe they start collecting cards, gold foils, extra legendaries that they just end up staking in order to get these higher uh, higher airdrop points or higher amount of airdrop points. Obviously, there's a bunch of people that also have packs. You're only allowed to put 100 packs on these uh, battle wagons. So if you have more than that, well, you start, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. I'm looking at this and saying, at a minimum, we burn 160,000 vouchers. That could be pretty cool. At least early, you know, sometime early next year or maybe towards the end of this year. So where does that land in the context of the overall uh, of the overall ecosystem? Okay, this is where the this is where things get a little fuzzy. So you can see here that we have about 17 million, 17.6 million vouchers that are still being calculated. But this also includes the null wallet. So you can take about 150,000 off of that, but it does also include the validator bridge. So there's two ways to look at this. Uh, for those who may not be familiar, the validator bridge is uh, the in-game, kind of like in-game bridge. So we all receive vouchers now, whether you're staking SPS or you have a node license, we all receive it on the SPS chain. But in order to spend it in-game, right? So for example, if you were gonna go buy Rebellion packs, you would need to transfer your vouchers from the SPS chain in-game. Why would people do that? I believe they would only do that if they're planning to actually spend their vouchers. So while we cannot confirm that all 7.3 million vouchers that are sitting in the validator bridge have been burned in game, because uh, again, I don't, I don't know how to check voucher G. Um, we, we can, uh, again, if you want to get aggressive with it, we can, we can assume that. And then all of a sudden we're down to like 10, 10.3 million vouchers in the ecosystem. 
and that you know doesn't doesn't account for the fact that we are going to be hopefully burning a ton more for more uh, rebellion sales as we go along. Maybe some potential uh, promo cards next year. All these different things. So in the grand context, 160,000 vouchers that could be burned for battle wagons is not a lot, right? It's that's four days worth of printing. But I think 160,000 as a bare minimum is is actually still uh, quite good, right? Because I think it's, I think it could be significantly higher than that, especially once people start to see the cards, especially once people start to uh, you know line everything up and start staking cards and packs and, and realize that hey, maybe I have some extra stuff here. There's no point in it. Let me just spend the vouchers. So I, I really I, I'm really excited about this concept. I don't I don't want to get overhyped about it because as I said, if 160 thousand is kind of the base, that's only four days of printing. We print 40 thousand per day, but. 160,000 isn't an insignificant amount at the same time. And if that's the real like lowest baseline of a thousand players, I think we can do a lot more than that. Maybe we get up into the several hundred thousand, maybe we get into 500,000. Again, that's still only like a couple of weeks worth of printing, but now you have some kind of utility for vouchers. You're removing them for something that people need and want in order to get more assets within the game, right? And this is, and it's not even like a, from a financial perspective. It's just, if you're a player in the game, you want to have these things and therefore you'll spend vouchers. The last thing that I'll say on this in terms of like the, perspective or alpha that was shared during the during the the live stream matt said that he considers vouchers free and i think that is really important for everybody to consider yes do we peg vouchers and when i say we i guess the team peg you know does a soft peg of vouchers to all the different things that have come out right so you had uh tower defense packs you had rift watchers you had node licenses you've had all these different promo cards over you know the last couple of uh, uh last couple of years you uh, you also have um a decb the soulbound unlocking for land um you know there's, there's a bunch of different things that we've soft pegged all these different values but the way matt views it is that if you are a player or a participant in the ecosystem, then you shouldn't really care about what the value of vouchers are because if you're staking SPS or you're trying to help decentralize the network by holding uh, nodes, right, and, and hopefully once those go live, actually running the nodes, you're receiving vouchers and you should be wanting to spend those in game. So again, it's not about the, the value, although I do appreciate the fact that Matt is trying to make them much uh, more scarce. Uh, again, I should say, Matt is trying to make vouchers scarce again, which is something that we should be doing because for the longest time, we've been told that they are the access token, right? The VIP type of token, but they've really been treated like the discount token. That was actually the wording that Aggie used when, uh, when talking about vouchers, which really kind of uh, irk me. So I'm glad that we're moving back towards this and that the team, specifically Matt and the team, are, 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 are thinking through how they can make vouchers have that kind of utility and then utilize them in this way moving forward. Will things be more expensive? Will they cost more vouchers? Yes. I mean, well, who knows? If vouchers go up to like 20 cents, it doesn't really matter at that point from the perspective of, hey, I'm buying this pack and all of a sudden now it goes from like $4.20 to, uh, you know, to $5.00. He's trying to get everybody to think about the fact that the pack is $4, but if you're a part of this ecosystem and you're receiving the vouchers for free by, uh, well, uh, I shouldn't say for free, but if you're receiving the vouchers as a reward for staking SPS or for, uh, you know, holding nodes, then, then it's essentially for free. Everything is still going to cost whatever the thing is. So, um, I'm actually really excited about that because if we can make this shift away from vouchers being a coupon or a discount token to vouchers being the access token, Right now, we have uh, a ton to eat through, and obviously, we're going to be printing 14.6 million per year, but I'm excited to see where vouchers actually go in six months. Uh, by, by, the, by like middle or Q2 of next year, it could be, we could be in a really interesting place. And this is not financial advice. I'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of vouchers. and you know, like that's, that's not the point of this at all. If anything, and again, this is not financial advice, I, I personally am happy that I am staking SPS and that I'm holding nodes because I want vouchers to feel like they are valuable and that access token. And therefore, I can then choose if I want to participate in whatever the team is offering, whether it's a promo card, a new pack set, or whatever the case is, or if the value is high enough and maybe I'm not interested, 
sell that access to somebody else. Not sell a coupon, but sell VIP access to the coolest stuff that the game is putting out. So this is the most bullish that I've felt on vouchers in a while. Again, not from a, hey, buy vouchers and flip them later. I have no idea what's going to happen to the, uh, the actual value of vouchers over time. But I do like the renewed focus on where we are trying to go with what vouchers mean in the game. So um, I'll go ahead and leave things at, uh, le uh, sorry, I'll go ahead and leave things there. I've rambled enough already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.